Good morning and a very warm welcome to this webinar, which is going to introduce the fittest workplace of 2022. Those of you who have joined us are obviously keen to put your best feet forward, and that's exactly what we are going to be doing today. Um, we won't take up much of your time, but we will inspire you, hopefully, to an event which I'm really excited about getting involved with uh, in the early stages of 2022. So to talk us through some of the logistics and some of the areas that will get you excited over the uh, over the coming uh, coming 30 minutes or so, uh, I'm delighted to welcome Emma Cook from Zevo Health. We're partnering with on this, and uh, over to you, Emma. Great, thank you so much, Rob. Hello, everyone. First of all, thank you from Zevo Health for taking the time to watch and listen in this morning. We are thrilled to have the opportunity to partner with Sport for Business. As Rob kindly introduced, my name is Emma Cook. I'm the commercial manager for Zevo Health. And joining me is my wonderful colleague, Sarah Keane, physical health consultant at Zevo. Sarah and I are really excited this morning to, you know, bring you through the challenge, what's involved, the benefits and answer any questions you might have. So just to bring you through the format, um, Sarah and I will talk about the challenge. There is a chat function that you should see on the right side of your screen. So I'd encourage all of you to kind of get busy asking any questions that you have relating to the challenge and we'll address those towards the end of the webinar. For those of you who are not familiar, the Fittest Workplace Challenge is an annual initiative hosted by Zevo Health. Each year, small, medium and large enterprise multi-industry organisations take part to battle it out and win the title of the fittest workplace. Kicking off in February 2022, the fittest workplace is, you know, a really great way to start the year, you know, bring employees back together after the festive period, really in a fun and motivating initiative. So how it all works, it's a two week step challenge. It's tracked and managed through the Zevo Health Wellbeing app, meaning limited administration time and effort for your HR and wellbeing teams. As you know, Zevo, we will be doing all the work for you. All participants will sync their fitness tracker, whether that's their smartphone, their wearable, with our app and receive points versus number of steps taken. So a very common question we're asked is around, you know, benchmark for daily steps. So what we'd be looking at is a baseline of approximately 10,000 steps per day per participant. Participants will also gain access to the app for a period of one month to enjoy, you know, all the features and benefits that come with having access to a 24-7 digital well-being tool, such as, you know, our global trending well-being content, our master classes, our recipe bank and meditation library. Our app is holistic um, so that means we focus on all elements of well-being so there is 100 percent something there for everybody to enjoy and another way of looking at it is having access to the app and um, if you do not already have let's say a digital solution in your organization is a really nice way to trial it you know and see how you think it might fit in with the organization and um, in the long term Everybody competing in the challenge will be able to track and see where their team and organization is ranking in the challenge via the applications live leaderboard. It is a movable feast. Um, I won't lie to you, it gets very addictive, but it is a lot of fun. And you really have, you know, great kind of camaraderie and like banter really with, with your peers. So everyone has access to the group chat function so people can, you know, Know, chat amongst themselves share photographs of where they're out walking or running um, and it's you know just it works very similarly to as you would use whatsapp 
Um, so also the winner, um, so what's in it for the winner? So as well as receiving the official title of the fittest workplace, the winning organization will successfully get their hands on the fittest workplace 2022 trophy, as well as a bespoke PR campaign with our PR partner, Honey and Buzz. Um, so I'd like to bring you through the cost for getting involved in the challenge as well. So the cost is 2495 XFAT to take part. This includes access to everything that I've brought, brought you through just now. But from a team perspective, it provides you with access for up to two teams. Each team can have up to 20 participants per team and any additional teams thereafter is 345 per team. So Sarah, I'm going to hand over to you now to um, bring all of our delegates this morning through the benefits of taking part in the challenge. So we're going to be looking at kind of the individual benefits as well as the organisational as well. So Sarah, over to you. Thanks, Anna. It's lovely to be with you here today. Um, yeah, just to kind of give you some context, uh, this year was our inaugural year. Um, and we had over 2,000 participants, uh, 31 companies. Um, so we decided to do a case study just to sort of evaluate, um, you know, how people found it, um, looking both from the end user perspective, so directly getting feedback from the participants themselves, and then also consulting with the HR um, point of contact at the end of the challenge. And Emma also conducted little focus groups with them as follow up. So as you can imagine, uh, there, there was many kind of tiers of benefit. So there's kind of three areas it look at. Um, on the end user kind of participant level, the benefits to the individual. And then we look at kind of the mid level, the benefits to the teams and the departments. And then uh, for the or organization overall, and we really kind of got a snapshot of those insights from the HR feedback. Um, so I guess as an employer, like at the fore of everyone's mind at the moment is mental health. It's really, um, yeah, so so prevalent in terms of uh, the trajectory that's being reported uh, via many national surveys. The CSO are publishing frequent um, frequent reports that give us like an indicator of quite a, a worrying trajectory in terms of increase in anxiety, loneliness, and depression. Um, and particularly now with the upheaval, um, that return to office being kind of paused, and we have a lot of more uh, remote workers um, in that position long term or in a sort of a, a hybrid setup. Um, yeah, it's very, very much at the core of employers' mind. How do we kind of look after the mental health of the employees? And as Emma said, uh, there's nothing like the camaraderie and the fun that the challenge can bring to the table. And no better woman, she actually won our internal competition that we also ran separate. And she was up at 12 o'clock on the final night with her teammates getting the last steps in, and they won by about like 200 steps. It was it was just she won by <laughs> by a hair, so it was great fun. Um, but to just then, yeah, to just look at the individual level, so mental health. Um, just to kind of quote some of the stats. It was like 78% uh, of the participants uh, rated that they had an increase in their subjective well-being. Um, so that's just perceiving that they felt healthier and felt better after just the two-week challenge, which is quite a remarkable uh, reflection. It just goes to show how quickly physical activity can improve how we feel and function. And there's interestingly around subjective well-being that has been shown to really translate into more positive uh, health behaviours in other domains. So it really starts this sort of domino effect. Um, the other kind of big thing to focus on would be metabolic health. And uh, again, as I said, with the remote work, uh, if, you, if you yourself maybe are working more from home than you would have pre-pandemic, you may have noticed like while you might still participate in structured exercise, like your yoga or go for a run, your organic daily activity levels um, may have plummeted. And if they have, you're, you're very much um, uh, not alone. Uh, a British Medical Journal article at the start of the year um, indicated that broadly across the population, there's a huge increase in sedentary behaviour. And so while we participate in our structured exercise, we can kind of think, okay, um, uncovered, but 
this uh, kind of prolonged sedentary behavior, prolonged inactivity throughout the day um, can have ravaging effects on our metabolic health. So just having these little um, prompts to move frequently throughout the day, even again over the short term, over two weeks, can help um, significantly improve our uh, biomarkers of our metabolic function. Um, so that's our metabolic health and mental health. Uh, the next big one, I guess, uh, again for employers that support their mind is structural health um, in the form of musculoskeletal disorders and work-related MSDs are very much again another thing on the increase. So um, as you can imagine, the more we move uh, and, and the less stagnation and prolonged tension, the decreased likelihood of these MSDs um, manifesting. So um, metabolic health, mental health, uh, our structural health, the subjective well-being, there was one more, um, oh, cognitive performance, yeah, creativity and innovation. Um, so you may be aware that like we actually have anatomical changes in our brain and the more we uh, engage in aerobic exercise. Um, and the hippocampus in particular is a part of the brain that, um, that literally increases in size relative to how much we exercise, uh, particularly aerobically, and that's linked to learning and memory. There's also uh, changes in prefrontal cortex activation that can be involved, uh, that plays a part in our creativity and innovation. So in essence, if you're ever feeling stuck or writer's block, get up, go for a walk, and then, then come back and just even anecdotally observe um, if you have that change in kind of energy and, and clarity. So um, in terms of the uh, participant feedback, just some other stats I'm just referencing here. I had to jot them down because I couldn't remember them all. 89% um, of the participants said that it really significantly motivated them to move more. And just shy of 90% said they would 100% sign up next year. And 90% said they'd 100% sign up. Yeah. Um, using all the, the, the uh, percentages. Um, so that's kind of a, a snapshot on the individual level. From the, from the HR, I guess from the team level, what we're looking at is any sort of novel challenge, you know, even in a playful context, has been shown to improve that psychosocial safety. So that sense of sort of belonging and as Emma said, camaraderie. Um, now, you may be aware of the ISO safety standards, psychosocial safety standards that were published last year. Um, 45,003, you can double check it, it's a checklist to make sure an employer is looking after that mental health uh, and, and social um, inclusivity of their workforce. So um, in essence, yeah, the, the, the feedback was that people were feeling more, um, the HR saw that it, there was a big boost in employee morale, employee energy levels, what was the stat? 91% reported improved morale. Um, and 87% uh, yeah, said there was widespread interest in participation. And um, interestingly, looking at the demographics, we had about a 58 to 42 divide between female and male. Um, and that's actually, even though you think you'd prefer 50-50, it's actually a very high participation because the research indicates that not often um, males will participate to a great extent in workplace wellbeing initiatives. So it was a really positive finding that you have that balance across the board. Um, and that 93% um, of, again, the HR reported that 93% um, said there was a significant improvement in the um, observable employee energy levels. Again, really, really positive for that team cohesion collaboration piece. And then I guess when you kind of pop that all into the melting pot from the organizational perspective, you've just got this more energized um, and cohesive workforce. And that was really, I guess, the distinguishing part of our challenge and the way it's designed is that instead of pitting colleagues against one another, as you often would in step challenges, it's really like a team effort, you know, um, uh, you know, you have to kind of work together in order to beat other companies, um, which adds that extra, extra kind of distinction uh, from other challenges. So I think I've covered all the bases. The only other thing I would add, Emma, maybe is just around the behavior change strategies, just, just to reaffirm that the way the app is designed, you know, and with, um, with the accountability, the capacity for self-tracking, the very clear target that Emma mentioned, the 10,000 steps, <clears throat> having that in mind, um, yeah, it really reinforces this kind of, um, yeah, 
possibility for attainment of the goal. Um, mm. And just to, to the final thing I would say is that this is a short term intervention. It is two weeks. It can yield acute significant benefits. But I would also as a, you know, urge employers to see this as a phenomenal opportunity, as a gateway a platform to then kind of follow up potentially with other um, interventions. You know, it, it, it really serves as that really kind of uh, brilliant introduction and then yeah not to just leave it and expect that 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 would be it just to perhaps mm -hmm. follow with webinars yeah. or uh, clinics etc anyway that's my little piece i hope that was that's great sarah you know it's great to give everyone kind of i suppose yeah a bit more around like the science behind kind of getting involved in um in challenges and like the benefits that it brings to the individual and um, as well as the organization and i know like personally when it, whenever i've gotten involved in challenges that we've done you know there's oh it, it really opens your eyes to actually how much movement you can get in in, in a day and um, you know if you have 10 minutes between a meeting it's like right okay i'll go outside and walk around the block and it just really helps you to instill kind of better habits into your day-to-day -day, you know and um, so I think like what would be great now would be to hand over to um, any of the, the participants today joining us for questions. I'm looking at the chat function at the moment. I don't see any questions um, yet. So I'm um, just making sure that everyone knows that the, the chat function is there on the right side. So if, you've, if there's anything that you, you wanna ask Sarah, Rob and I about the challenge, it'd be great to hear from you. I might just kick us off, Emma. Um, yeah. I know that, like, like kids in the classroom, nobody is really uh, terribly excited to put their hand up first. But the, you know, the the, the process of this, like we've done, uh, you know, people will be familiar with the number of the things that we've done. We did the, the super quiz, and from the first year, which it was always kind of you know, challenging to actually get people involved in the first year because you hadn't seen it, you didn't know what it was going to be about. But from the first year to the second year, we doubled the number of organizations that were actually taking part in it. And similar to that, the crack was just fantastic. We ended up with a, you know, a, a, a last buzzer beating, uh, you know, dead heat decider between uh, off the ball who beat out RTE. But just, you know, the enjoyment of it and just that sort of level of friendly competition was something mm. which was huge. We did, did an All-Ireland Company Games uh, just before lockdown as well and you know just when you see the ability of people to actually support their colleagues and to mm. engage in competition with their uh, you know with, with, with other organizations it's hugely uh, you know mm. motivating and we're going to we're, we're going to be tracking this as well so you know from a even from a PR point of view you will be seen by taking part as being an organization that really sort of values its people and that is a fun place to work. So I think there's, you know, there are so many different things in it. When we talk about the, you know, teams of 10, um, Emma, the, we count, is it the aggregate of all 10 of those or is it the, you know, the yeah. each best performing? I'm just that's, thinking of yeah, somebody, you know, really as a sort no, of yeah, great question, Rob. Um, so just around kind of the points and how that works. So um, just to mention there, so it's teams, teams of 20. So um, you can have up to 20 participants on a team. So if if you think about the, um, the point structure in a tiered perspective, so first off, you have the individual. So an individual is awarded one, uh, sorry, not 100 points. An individual is awarded one point for every 1,000 steps. Then the next uh, tier up from that is the team score. So the team score is the total number of points divided by the total number of users on the team. And then the organization score is the total of all the team scores divided by the total number of teams. So it's done um, on, on average naturally to kind of make it um, uh, fair across the board because we do have organizations from varying different sizes take part, yeah. Okay, and like even looking at, it, I mean the you know the cost of that on a team of twenty, you know for the uh, you know for the two five really to go into that. I mean you're you're looking at just over a hundred quid a head, and it comes down if there's more teams that are entered. But like that's that's the price of you know of taking people out for a you know for a night out. 
obviously yeah. we're not going to be doing that this Christmas, so this <laughs> could be yeah, the, the this could be the <laughs> yeah, this could um, be the yeah, fish so and healthy yeah. version of, of yeah. Christmas party for February. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, it's the the cost, yeah, it's the two, four, nine, five, and you can have up to two teams um, and each of those teams can have up to 40 participants so it's yeah get 40 people getting involved for the 2495 but obviously everything behind that you know with access to the application and all of the other um, great content that we have within our app um, and then yeah if there's any any additional teams that in that companies want to join it's three four five um per team you know so I think as well, what was really some really nice feedback that we got um, was because naturally with everybody, you know, we're doing still doing our meetings on Zoom and um, it looks like that's probably going to continue, you know, into the new year. So one person had just said, oh, it was so nice to kind of start Zoom meetings and be having other things to talk about and have kind of good fun about apart from talking about kind of COVID and, you know, kind of current current situation there. And um, so, yeah, and another, just really. Another piece of feedback, Emma, actually regarding the app that uh, came through was people loved the meditations and access to the recipes. Um, and the other features on the app that they could get for the two weeks. So um, yeah, just yeah. something to add there. Yeah, exactly. And we have on like within, so everyone will have access to the app for that period of the month. So it'll be one week before the challenge to get them kind of used to using the app um, and then the two weeks of the challenge, then then a week after as well. So while the um, for that period of month, we'll be um, releasing kind of specific content related to the fittest workplace. So it'll be a lot of kind of you know good good video content around kind of good stretches to do to kind of get ready, get limber for the challenge, and you know good energizing uh, recipes, and again you know articles even around kind of promoting sleep. Um, which all really kind of boost the individual's well-being while taking part in the challenge. Great, okay, so there still isn't any question. So I'm hoping that's a sign that we've covered everything that people wanted uh, to hear about. Um, so Rob, is there any other comments from your side? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, we, we know we've already got uh, a, a number of, uh, of both larger and, and you know, mid-sized companies that are part of the, the Sport for Business network that have already signed up. So we know that this is going to, we know this is going to take off. Um, I really hope that we can get, you know, as many organizations as possible in here because I just think that the value of it in terms of what it's going to deliver for your staff, for your own, uh, you know, sort of a personal sense of this is something that I've done that really sort of made me a winner within the organization, that that's going to be, uh, you know, laid on a plate for you. Like sometimes these challenges, they can be, you know, difficult to organize in terms of the, you know, the spreadsheet, the communications and things like that. The beauty of this is that it's all done for you. So it's literally, uh, you know, switching on a phone and uh, and there you go, you're off and running. So I, you know, I know that in December, it's kind of hard to think of anything that's going to be happening in early 22. But if uh, if anybody has any queries on this that, you know, that they want to follow up with me or indeed with Emma, I'll, let Emma finish off now with, uh, with with her details and introduction um, or a way of, of, of getting in touch. But, you know, mm. I, I, this is going to be exciting. Um, we don't know what the weather is going to be like in February. We don't know whether we're going to be locked down, locked up, locked in, out and around. But we will be able to get out and walk. And yeah. walking as colleagues, walking as teams is something that can really give a lift at a time of year when we're going to need it. So, um, so thanks mm -hmm. very much for joining us this morning and uh, back to you uh, Emma and thanks very much Sarah for sharing all of the, the stats as well like the 90% mm -hmm. that are committed to 100% that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. good. Emma. <laughs> yeah thanks so much Rob very well kind of said there towards the end just in terms of you know everybody getting out and getting active and you know just having some fun in the new year so look thank you um, again for your time this morning and um, I really hope that you find the webinar useful and informative and for, so for those of you who are up for the challenge or considering taking part you know I'd love to have a further conversation with you and um, so my contact details 
and my email is emma.cook at zebohealth.com so that's e-m-m-a dot cook c-o-o-k-e at zebo z-e-v-o health.com and my mobile number is 86 2044689. So do not hesitate to get in touch with me and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your Friday and the weekend to come. Thank you so much.